Greetings residents, uh, Dick Thurston here with another edition of Talk of the Town. I want to cover two things today. First is a reminder concerning weather and uh, dangerous conditions uh, now in, in the next week or so. And then also about our uh, initiatives uh, for the year 2022 and uh, you know, more at a high level because you'll hear more about these in the board meetings. First, uh, we are uh, sitting during this taping, just having experienced the late snowfall this morning. Uh, so the roads had been prepped, uh, but I want to really remind people that it's not so much the snow as the Arctic temperatures that we are going to be seeing starting uh, tonight, which is actually being filmed on a Thursday through the weekend. And actually through the next week, 10 days, we're going to see very cold temperatures that barely get above freezing during the day and in some cases drop to zero at night. Uh, this is a time where you have to be very careful with respect to going outside. Uh, a lot of freezing occurs if there's ice melt during the day that will freeze up at night. So a lot of black ice. Our crews are out there constantly looking for such conditions and taking care of them. Also, you know, your pets, um, your uh, water outside. Make sure again, as I said in previous uh, discussions, that you take care of them, look after them, uh, and uh, dress warmly as you go out. If you know of anybody that needs help, uh, please let us know. Of course, call 911 if it's a serious issue. And then also let me know in the supervisor's office uh, whether or not there is a special need for towels, uh, blankets, uh, warm clothing, particularly jackets. We had a very successful drive uh, you know, initiated by Joe Torres and also uh, very significantly helped by the you know, Mid-Hudson Islamic Association to help you know, the fire victims and all the tenants in the Bronx uh, apartment fire. Uh, but we have the ability still to collect if you should need some. So please reach out to us again. Thanks to Joe. Thanks to the mid the Hudson Islamic Association, and thanks to the many members of the community that donated uh, groceries, as well as uh, warm clothing, blankets, toys for children. Uh, very much appreciated and I think far exceeded uh, Joe Torrey's uh, expectations. Uh, shifting now to our community in the programs. As you recall, starting my first year in office, I began uh, an initiative that took each letter of the word Wappinger uh, to identify focused areas for our initiatives. Once again this year, you know, we continue with that uh, you know, approach. Uh, I have uh, it covered in Southern Duchess News, also in the Hornet, and uh, we have also copies available uh, upon request here in the town. But for this taping, I just want to mention, go through it at a very high level. Uh, you'll be hearing more about it during board meetings. Each one of our councilmen and women is uh, very much involved, uh, especially for their wards. Uh, again, as a reminder, that's William Beal at the first uh, ward and also my appointed deputy uh, supervisor for this year. Now, second ward uh, would be Angela Bettina. Uh, third ward is Chris Phillips and fourth ward is Al Casella. Uh, so if you have any specific issues uh, that you would like the board to cover, not only can you contact me, but especially contact them. They're very proactive in attending issues as they may arise on a, a daily, weekly basis. This year, and again, the first letter, Wappinger, <coughs> uh, the W, stands for water and sewer. And we've been fortunate to receive a number of grants. We've, I've been very proactive in submitting grant applications. So. Some of the projects we've been talking about, such as the Wildwood Sewer and Water Project, will really see um, shovels in the dirt, and, and others are going to continue to be in planning you know, stage. So if you have <coughs> some specific uh, needs as we try to get more involved uh, in uh, longer term planning, we did receive a grant for uh, source water protection. Uh, we just had a call yesterday. This is a very proactive and uh, aggressive program to identify where our water recharge areas are and the necessary precautions that we have to take you know, for 
protecting those areas along the Wappinger and Sprout you know, Creek. You know, the second uh, letter is A. We have uh, taken a lot of initiatives and will continue to do that for our arts, culture, and also our antiquities. Uh, antiquities being not just the history of the town and the documents, and working together closely, our town historian and I, with the Wappingers Historical Society, but also buildings uh, and uh, structures and uh, other historical sites within the town. We have an arts and culture committee, uh, which as COVID winds down, hopefully winds down, uh, will be more you know, proactive in this area. We're always seeking volunteers. This is really one good one. And also we're working closely with the uh, school district in order to uh, extend this to our uh, youth. Now, the next uh, letter is P. Now, this P is for people, now, particularly as we look at our veterans, seniors, uh, our less uh, gifted, you know, disadvantaged folks, to name a few. And we're continuing those programs. Now, uh, we'll be, the board will be appointing Kevin Hawthorne as our chairperson for the senior you know, committee. Now, this is a senior advisory group you know, for this year. So new special programs you know, will also be initiated, uh, particularly to help address a number of the uh, social challenges uh, that we are facing throughout society today. The uh, second P uh, stands for parks. Uh, the town has uh, really taken a, a strong focus uh, during the last uh, you know, four years, uh, next two years, we'll be, see an enhanced focus. And particularly our uh, bo board members, our ward councilmen and women you know, are uh, taking strong uh, efforts to help uh, look after uh, the parks that already exist in the town. Some of them uh, experience significant issues such as flooding. And also we're looking at uh, establishing more in the way of playgrounds and even parks in some of the wards that don't have you know, many. Uh, in particular, as we look at uh, the uh, completion of projects, uh, I get many calls on Spook Hill. Spook Hill has been held up a large degree by supply chain problems. Uh, those are, we think, largely behind us. In fact, uh, we were able to get the building you know, closed up before winter, so you'll notice uh, a yellow uh, you know, bus. Uh, that's our work bus. Uh, that uh, means that the interior is being uh, built out and to be ready in the spring. Uh, but that will then largely complete phase one. Phase two will be discussed. That's going to be related to the exercise areas going forward. Uh, in you know, The next letter is the I. That's for investment, and particularly investment in all sorts of infrastructure. And uh, here again, we have a long list of items that we want to tackle. We'll be having a workshop coming up, uh, planning on having it at the, uh, what would be the first regular meeting in February. So instead of a regular meeting, we would have a workshop where we'll be discussing uh, those various infrastructure and other significant uh, capital investments. Uh, and uh, this will be using the combination of grant monies, uh, federal monies, you know, ARPA you know, funding, and other sources of revenue that we may have you know, for the coming year, especially if uh, any of the legislation that's pending in Congress were ever to be you know, passed. Uh, the next letter is N. That stands for our neighborhoods, for all of you. As you know, Wappinger is uh, the result of uh, the combining of a number of hamlets and the village of Wappinger Falls. And so we have uh, discussed uh, initiatives within those hamlets and working more closely also at the request of the village and village activities. You know, so those act, uh, items will be discussed again, especially during the uh, next uh, a few months. You know, keep in mind that because of the uh, election cycle in the town, that basically strong proactive initiatives have to be taken, uh, really addressed during the first year of every two-year term. And that's largely because you know, in the second year, you know, people through the primary process, the regular election process, out there uh, addressing uh, the community you know, from the point of view of election, you know, campaigning. 
Uh, here, you know, we've minimized that, reduced it significantly, but the way the primary system has worked, uh, we're still distracted by that. But nevertheless, the neighborhoods uh, will continue to be maintained. And actually, a number of the um, neighboring communities are looking to us as, you know, some of the best-in-class situations. We'll have a new edition of our town guide. Uh, this will be a town guide for 2022. Uh, that's a work in process right now. Hopefully, we'll be finalized in the next few weeks. That will have also a special focus on our neighborhoods. The next item uh, letter uh, is going to be G uh, for government. Uh, I have continued to look at how we uh, simplify, enhance uh, our government services. I know, you know we still get a number of complaints but we're constantly looking at that, including uh, changes, reform, uh, amendments to our town you know, code and the various uh, code provisions. So stay tuned, there will be more you know, coming with respect to those initiatives. The next letter, uh, next to last letter, letter is E. Uh, that's related to our environment. A number of initiatives, whether or not it's working with uh, Over Creek Farms on their uh, conservation easements, um, Ch you know, taking uh, and challenging uh, residents that are ignoring conservation easements um, and uh, you know wetlands and protected species areas. We do have a couple of those. Uh, we'll be taking more aggressive action against them. And as I said, protecting our water aquifers, you know, protecting you know a lot of our open lands. We do, uh, and the board is very much focused on a balanced approach to development, you know, but protecting large areas of our uh, lands where, you know, that we feel is very appropriate uh, in order to protect, like I said, you know, you know, we have a lot of conservation easements in the town and we have a lot of wetlands uh, that have, a, you know, a number of protected species, whether or not they're blanding turtles or they're a type of lizard, you know, or we take that very seriously. And our MS4 program with Walter Artists is designed to protect uh, from uh, environmental issues when there is a new development going on. Uh, this past year, uh, we saw a lot more in the way of issues uh, because of the exceptional amount of rain. Uh, so we will be uh, with Mike Sheehan's uh, ABLE assistance working on cleaning up more of the culverts of the uh, water basin easements you know, to try to reduce that uh, risk uh, to our residents. Last but not least, uh, the last R in the word Wappinger, you know, stands for our recreation, you know, department, our recreation programs. Uh, I am re-proposing the uh, Wappinger you know, Community Advisory you know, Group, and we'll be seeking volunteers. Uh, we'll have uh, a, a committee that will have eight members uh, that are voting members and three ex officio members. Those voting members, uh, I'm proposing to the board that we have a minimum of one person from each ward. So if you have any interest at all in serving on this advisory committee relating to our recreation activities, community day, a variety of programs, uh, we need volunteers. So first volunteers for committee membership and then second for community activities. And finally, that R also stands for recognition. We will continue to recognize whether it's our hometown heroes and the uh, veterans or our hometown heroes uh, during COVID uh, or other uh, types of activities such as uh, citizen of the year. Uh, we will continue to have those recognitions for all ages. So please stay tuned. Uh, we welcome your comments. And uh, during the next few uh, days, please stay safe and remain warm. Thanks.